Good morning. Um, this is, even though a video that you'll see later in the week, if this is actually what's going on, um, will tell you that that was the first day I would be, I would be out for uh, the new baby being born. This is hopefully the actual first video of, uh, that I'll be showing as I'm gone off to enjoy my brand new addition to my family. Hopefully, nice healthy baby, uh, boy or girl, it doesn't really matter as long as it's healthy. And uh, then I'll be back in a few days. But I thought that while I was gone, I know how much you love hearing my voice because you know how much I love it. Uh, hearty har har. So I uh, thought that we'd do some stuff, talk about polynomials for a little bit, um, what that means. This is actually a brand new topic for you guys if you haven't had uh, algebra part B before, or I guess if you had Gateway, we covered it a little bit. I'm going to show you how to do it uh, mathematically, and we're also going to talk about some stuff that we're going to do a little um, covert calculator work. I know, it's like this horrible thing that I'd ever talk about doing that, but uh, it gives me more time to focus on problem solving and other such things. If I just show you some quick stuff to... Uh, do with polynomials if you're not actually going to use those polynomial skills when you go on to geometry. I want to show you stuff and spend a lot of time developing skills you're actually going to use. Uh, so today we're going to do mathematical things. Maybe later on in the week we get to some calculator things, but that's okay too. Today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting polynomials. Polynomials are um, algebraic expressions that have more than one term. An example, or actually any terms, poly means more than one, but this is a monomial if I add another term to it, it would be a binomial. And the more I go, this is a trinomial, and on and on and on. But today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting those. Now, you'll notice that these have to, in order to really be polynomials, they have to have at least you know one variable in them. In fact, they are always the same variable, but they may have different exponents. You may vaguely remember me saying a hundred thousand times that when you work with variables and they have exponents on them, you treat them differently depending on whether you're adding and subtracting them or whether you're multiplying dividing. This is supposed to be a multiply. I didn't want to put the x there to confuse you. If you're adding and subtracting numbers or variables uh, that have exponents on them, or maybe the exponent is just one, if I'm adding or subtracting, all I want to do is combine like terms. So if I have 3x squared plus 2x blah, 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 uh, plus 4x squared, I'm going to combine like terms by marking up the x squareds with two lines. Maybe the regular x gets 1. And seeing if there's anything alike. These two are alike, so I'm going to read the story. 3 plus 4 is 7. So this one would be 7x squared plus 2x, just in case I have to do that. Now, if I'm multiplying or dividing, I need to actually mess with the exponents. To, uh, maybe I have to add them together if I'm multiplying the, the polynomials. If I'm dividing polynomials, I'm going to subtract those exponents. But today, none of that has anything to do with anything because you don't have to worry about it. All we're doing today, since I'm adding and subtracting uh, polynomials, is combining like terms. So let's look at a problem that we'll have to deal with today, or one like one we have to deal with today. It would be pretty silly for me to just show you all the problems for today, and that'd be done. These are two binomials, and I'm going to add them together. The plus is important. Now, if this plus isn't here and these two are touching, remember, hamsters touch and they multiply. So in this case, uh, in that case, I'd have to multiply it out. But this, I'm just adding. So I'm going to go ahead and mark everything out in a way to identify what type of exponent I have over top of that variable. If I have an x with a 2, I'm going to make two lines underneath. If I've got no variable at all, I'm just going to leave it blank. I'm not going to put anything under it. If I have an x to second power, I'm going to do 2. Say I had just a regular x here. I just put one line under it, shockingly enough, and minus 3. After I mark everything up here, I can see pretty quickly that these two, uh, right here and right here, are like terms, and these two are like terms. They're not necessarily like each other, but they are alike. So I'm going to combine these following the script that I've been given by the problem. Once upon a time, positive 5 plus 1. Remember, if you don't see it, there's 1 there. So back in my mind, 5 plus 1 equals 6. 6x six squared. Then I deal with plus 5 minus 3. So 5 minus 3. So I have 5, and I take 3 away. So that would leave me with plus 
2. So my final answer is 6x squared plus 2. Yes, it is that easy. I know you're thinking about that right now. Let's look at a more complicated one. Uh, this is a pretty gigantic one, so much so that I'm going to have to find a book to put under the camera so that I can show the whole thing. Look what I found, a book. It's actually an algebra book. It's like I never do anything than math, right? Okay, so I have this gigantic polynomial. I see that plus there. That's very important. So that means I'm going to be combining like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and mark everything up in a manner that I see fit. X squared, I'm going to do two lines. The x's, I'm going to do one. I'm going to leave this one. The x to the third power. You can do three lines underneath. Sometimes I like to do one line on top, and then it's x to the fourth. I put two lines on top. I'm clever that way, I guess. Um, 7x squared, that would be two lines underneath. One line here, and none there. Now all I have to do is look to see what lines are alike, or what do I have in common. And then I need to put it in what's called standard form. Standard form. Standard form means I pick the variable with the largest exponent and put it first. Standard form means I pick the variable with the largest exponent and put it first and then go down. I descend the exponents. I said it louder in case you didn't hear me because I know some of you are probably zoning out or sleeping right now and someone it's possible that someone's actually starting to reach for their nose to pick it. Don't. You're in a classroom. So let's talk about 9x to the third power. This has got to be the biggest one. Look, it's got a line on top. Do I see any more of those? No. If I don't see any more, I'm just going to bring it down. And by that, I mean tell it it doesn't look good today. Those pants are not a good look for you, 9x to the third power. There it is. Then I'm going to look for the next exponent, or the next largest exponent, which is x squared. I have a couple of those, so I'm going to combine them following the tail that I've been told. 6x squared plus 7x. So 6 plus 7 is 13. Uh, then I'm going to deal with the x's, so I've got one here and here minus 3x, or negative 3x, minus 3. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6x. Now, don't do something dumb here and say, oh, it's 3 minus 3, so 0. No. This is a negative 3. It's written as a negative. Uh, finally, I have to look for the letters, or the integers that don't have any variables at all. 9 plus 5. 9 plus 5 is 14. So that's the final answer. That's the answer in standard form. As you can see, it goes 3 to 2 to this should be an exponent of 1 to no exponent at all. x to the 0 power, if you, if you will. Now that I think you totally have it all figured out, I'm going to give you some practice problems to work at your desk. So you might want to get a pencil out. And if you don't have a calculator out, number one, is it your first day? And number two, um, get one out. So the way we're going to go about this is I would like you to solve the c to the second power minus 6c, that's a quantity, plus 7c plus 5. So work that one out. The second one asks you to look about uh, look at this concept in a different way. It says find the perimeter. And if you don't remember what the perimeter is, it's the distance around. Like a mall cop will say, I'm going to go check the perimeter, which means I'm going to go walk around the building while I have a smoke on my uh, regular working hours instead of having to use a break. So you're going to add all of these things up. So add r squared plus 3, r squared plus 4, 4r squared minus 1, 5r squared plus 2. Add them all up and find what the answer is. Now I'm going to ask whoever's in charge here to pause the video now so that I can go ahead and uh, to allow everyone to have a chance to solve the problems. And when you think they're done, maybe five minutes, uh, I have a timer somewhere in the room you might want to use, um, come back and unpause the video and... After a couple seconds, I should start yapping again. Okay, I gave you a few seconds, so uh, let's get these prob practice problems done so we can continue on with the old lesson here. C squared, I've got two lines underneath that one, one under C, one under C, and leave that one alone. The c squared is the only one, so I'm just going to bring it down. 
These uh, are like terms because they both just have the C. Uh, read the story. Negative 6 plus 7. If I owe $6 and somehow I magically find 7, the amount that I can actually spend is 1C. And since I'm not some Romanesque figure who just thinks that lavish lifestyles are all it's about, I'm just going to leave the 1 out and just put the C there. The 5 is all alone. The 5 stands alone, so the final answer is C squared plus C plus 5. At least I hope it is, because if it's not, I missed it, and that would be so, 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 so unfair. For here, I'm going to uh, save time of rewriting it. You probably should have rewritten it, or you had to write it down somewhere, I guess. But I'm going to go ahead and mark up all the variable terms. You'll notice that there's no regular R here, which I think is interesting, but not so interesting that I'm going to be bothered talking about it anymore. Let's combine like terms. Anything with two lines under it is a like term. This is considered a 1, and so it's this. So 5 plus 4. Remember, numbers uh, only look at the signs in front, and since this is a perimeter, we're adding the distance. 5 plus 4 plus 1 more plus one more. So 5 plus 4 is 9, plus one more is 10, plus one more is 11. So that will be 11r to the second power. And now let's just look at the regular numbers. So I'm going to start here, why not? 3 plus 4, which is 7, plus 2 more, which is uh, 9, minus 1, so that would be 8. So 11r squared plus 8. So hopefully you got those right. If you didn't, uh, you need to get your life in order or talk to a friend, maybe they get it. Let's talk about uh, subtracting polynomials. Very similar to adding polynomials, shockingly enough. So I've got this scenario going on. 9p minus 15 minus 2p plus 3. The big difference is instead of having a plus here, I've got that minus sign. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn the problem into an addition problem. Because the minus thing is really confusing and annoying. So what I want you to do is change this to a plus and for these two, or any after this change, change their sign. So this becomes minus 2. And this becomes minus 3. That'll save you a boat load of time. That would be a boat load, not what you might have thought that I said. So I'm going to do this. And then I just solve it as normal. Because this is a plus, it makes anything else completely innocuous which is to say that it doesn't add any weirdness. So uh, one line here, one line there. So 9 minus 2. By the way, once you have the plus here, it's kind of nice because you can just not worry about it and only look at the numbers inside the parentheses. So I do 9 minus 2, which in my mind has got to be 7, doesn't it? And then negative 15, not positive 15, negative 15. Negative 15 minus 3. So I owe $15. I borrow three more. That sounds suspiciously like my actual life. 7p minus 18. Let's look at a way more advanced one. It's big. This is a giant one. This is the one I had to move the, uh, another one I would definitely have to move that camera up a little bit. So I've got n to the seventh power here, but my biggest issue right now is this minus. So I need to change this to a plus and change all of the signs afterwards. So this became negative, this became negative, this became positive because it used to be negative, and this became negative big switch. I'm going to rewrite this. Here's a really bad decision if you're a, an, a teacher at some point. Like you're like, oh, I'll never be a teacher, but maybe some for some reason people will actually be wanting you to teach. Uh, a good plan is not to write a huge problem like this in the middle of a paper that you have in landscape form, but that's more of a personal critique against myself than anything else, so don't take it to heart. There we go. So I'm going to mark all that out so I don't have to see it anymore. Or I could just do this, right? Of course, it'll bleed right through and look insane. How about we just leave it? And I just mark that out and try not to think about it being up there. Now, I need to mark everything. I know there's n to the seventh power, and I could actually make seven lines. I'm really totally capable of doing that. I know you thought, well, there's no way. Told you. See, so, yeah, I can count to. Uh, n to the third power, maybe I do lines underneath this time because the numbers are so big. 1, 2, 3, and then 1 here. 
Now, to combine these, I need to find uh, my like terms. These gigantic lines are indicative of being like terms. So I just do 7 minus 1. So 7 minus 1 is 6 n to the seventh power. Then I look at 9 n to the third minus 3. 9 minus 3 is 6. Then I look at uh, negative 6 n plus 6. So if I owe 6 and then get 6, then that would be 0. So those two cancel themselves out. Then I do negative 6 minus 12. Negative 6 minus 12 is negative 18. So my final answer is 6, the worst n I've drawn all day, to the 7th power plus 6 n to the 3rd power minus 18. Time for more practice problems. I was getting a little nervous. So I'll just give you a little personal insight into my life. I thought for a second that I had like 50 more of these slides, and then I realized I'd made copies of this presentation to show you, just in case you can see them. Here they are. Um, I thought that all these were other things I hadn't covered, and I'm already bored. So hopefully I can get through this a lot faster. These are the practice problems. Uh, you will notice that they are both uh, with minus. Uh, they are both subtraction problems. So you need to go ahead and change this to a plus, and change the signs in front of these, and change the signs in front of these, and then combine like terms. By the way, do not flip out down here. If it has a squared and b squared, it is the same as a squared and b squared. If it has a and b, it is not the same as a squared and b. Both of the uh, variables and the exponents connected to them have to be the same in order for you to have like terms. Now, I'm going to very nicely ask whoever's in charge of the video to pause the video for a few more minutes, give people a chance to work the problems, uh, and then whenever you feel like they've had a chance to do it, you can unpause the video and wait awkwardly while I stand here with the mic still turned on and probably breathing into it creepily, and then uh, I'll go over how to solve the problems. All right, hopefully that wasn't too miserable. Um, let's do number three. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the signs after that minus. I'm going to change this to a plus. By the way, the reason that I can do this is because I'm going to treat it like a distributive property where I do uh, negative one times positive three, which would make it negative three. Negative one times negative two would make it positive two. And this four is positive four, so negative one times positive four would change it to a negative four. That's why it works that way, just in case you were wondering, like, I don't get it. Why does it work that way? Well, now you know. Distributive property. Baby goes bathroom, that whole thing. And while I'm yapping, I might as well mark those out, right? So um, treat it, just read the story now. 11 minus 3 gives me 8. Negative 5 plus 2, so that would be negative 3. Negative 3, A. Uh, 6 minus 4, so that's 2. And that's it. That's all I've got to do for that one. Uh, the one for number four, so by the way, your final answer is 8a squared minus 3a plus 2, which sounds very Canadian. Um, and I can say that because my wife is Canadian. I'm going to add plus here, or change it to a plus. That will change this to a negative. That will change this to a positive because it already was negative. That will change this to a positive because it already was negative. And this positive becomes negative. So, or minus, or whatever you want it to be. However you want to explain it to yourself is fine. Just be aware that this is a minus 12 or a negative 12, however you want to think about it. Now, let's look at like terms. If I have a squared and b squared, I'm going to do some way to mark it up. I'm going to make two marks on top because they're both squared. Why not? These are both regular, uh, just variables with exponents of 1, so I'll put one line underneath that one. This one has both of them squared. This one has one squared and one not squared. So maybe I'll put one line on top and one line on the bottom, because why not? For this one, I'll put a line underneath. By the way, you can mark them up any way you want. If you want to do shapes around those numbers or uh, just make a mental note, that's fine. But you have to be very meticulous and make sure you're doing the right thing. So I've got, this has two lines on top and so does this. So 7 minus, so I'm going to mark that out completely so I don't even have to think about it anymore. 7 minus 12. 7 minus 12 is negative 5. a to the second power, b to the second power. Then I've got, um, let's see, do anything with a square in it before. So this is the only one that has a mark on top and bottom. So I'm just going to bring that down. Then I'll deal with the a, b problem. So 
negative 5 plus 3. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. A, B. And finally, I've got the numbers that don't have anything. Negative 8 minus 15 gives me negative 13. So that's all you really have to do. If uh, you have a plus in the middle, just go ahead and combine like terms after you mark them up. If you have a minus in the middle, uh, change the signs after uh, this point. So after the break, chain, flip all those signs to the opposite, and then solve it the exact same way. Combine like terms. So good luck.